While the S&P 500 is definitely one of my favorite investments, I may have just found something better and just as easy, so I wanted to fill you in. Now I feel very confident that if I invest just $200 a month into this fund for the next 40 years, I'll have over $1 million sitting in that account. That's $96,000 of my own money invested and over $966,000 of compound interest that my investment will grow. The S&P 500 is arguably one of the best investments out there with over 100 years of data backing that up. But like I said, I think I found something better. These two are better in that they're going to appreciate at the same value or even higher, but then also you won't have to wait till you're old and retired to reap the benefits. As you guys know, I'm an actual university professor, and I make sure and do all this research so that I can make investing simplified. It's also a big passion of mine to make sure and present people with options. I really don't think there's ever a time where you should just offer a cookie cutter solution for everybody. I think each person is an individual and has unique goals and things that they care about and things that they want. And so that's what this channel aims to do. So let's get started with this option, which I think some of you are definitely going to like. So with this option we're going to be using two separate ETFs and with that you're going to be able to take advantage of the highest highs and then also it'll make it so that the market lows don't hit you as hard. So this is the best of both worlds. Now looking at this graph here the blue line is the S&P 500 and the other two ETFs are the other colors. Notice here that over the past year yellow here is much lower than blue but when we look at the last 10 years yellow is much higher than blue. And in this graph, it's showing that if one would have invested $10,000 into each of these ETFs 10 years ago, this is what it would have grown to. So of course, looking at that graph, that blue one in the middle is great. It means that it's grown a bunch. The S&P 500 has grown, but we kind of want to take advantage of that yellow one, don't we? Here's how while keeping us safe because things that can go super high up can also drop a bunch, so we want to mitigate that. I'm going to quickly explain each of these two ETFs, but even more importantly than knowing what they are and what they do is how to use them. So stick around till the end for that. All right, so VU is a Vanguard fund, and so the next two ETFs I'm going to pick are going to be categorized categories and you can pick different types of ETFs that you'd like that would fit into this category but what I'm going to do is make them be Vanguard funds only so that we can compare apples to apples. So the first category is going to be a dividend category and the reason for that is because that's that one that's going to be a little more stable. Normally my favorite fund in the dividend category would be SCHD which is a Charles Schwab fund but in the Vanguard fund I really like VYM which is the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF and it seeks to track the investment performance of the FTSE High Dividend Yield Index. VYM has a dividend yield of over 3% and the dividend is paid every quarter or every three months. This ETF has grown almost 10% average appreciation every year for the last 10 years. A lot of the companies in the fund are things high in financials and healthcare and this is so important for consistency. The top 10 companies are huge solid companies such as Johnson & Johnson, JP Morgan, Procter & Gamble, and Home Depot. One of the biggest things you want to look for when looking at an ETF is an expense ratio and this one has one of the lowest possible at 0.06%. As a side note, right now is an awesome time to be looking at buying this ETF because it is in super value territory and it's incredibly cheap. Now there's two important reasons why you want to have this dividend style category as one of your main ETFs. The first one is to keep that volatility low. It's definitely not going to be one that totally shoots up but it's also not going to super drop when things are going bad. So consistency is key. The next thing is just cash flow. Once you've built this thing up a little bit for a couple of years, you can start taking passive income in the form of these dividend checks, and you can just sit back and do nothing for the rest of your life and continue to get these checks that just come in every quarter. I'm going to talk more about that after I tell you about this next ETF and how you combine both of these to really supercharge your finances. Now this next ETF category is a super fun one and that's the growth category. And usually the one that I like best is gonna be QQQ, but I'm actually starting to lean a little more towards this one, which is the Vanguard growth ETF and that's VUG. This one seeks to track the performance of the CRSP US large cap growth index. 
ETFs. I just love growth ETFs because they're so much fun. They are the ones that can go straight up to the moon, but they are a little more risky, of course. BUG is appreciated over the past 10 years. This fund has 250 stocks and very concentrated in the highest growing industries such as technology, and consumer discretionary. The top companies in the fund are all ones you'd expect, such as Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, and Nvidia. Just like the fund before, one of its biggest features is the low expense ratio of 0.04%. And for a growth fund, that is just incredibly low. For example, QQQ has an expense ratio of 0.20, which is five times more expensive than VUG. And then one of the most famous ones today, which is ARC, has an expense ratio of 0.75, which is almost 20 times more expensive than VUG. And those fees really add up and take away from your profit. So please look at the expense ratio as one of the first things you look at when one of your friends tells you that you should go invest in this ETF. So like I mentioned before, one could just invest in VU forever, that one ETF, and after 30 or 40 years, you'd have a nice little nest egg. But by only investing in that one, you're missing out on that possible crazy growth potential and possible passive income whenever it is that you want it. So if you want to start reaping some of the benefits of all of this investing you're doing now, and you'd rather see that in 10 years or 20 years rather than in 40 years, you might just want to rethink this strategy. So let's do an example. If you were to invest $100 per week into VU, into that S&P 500 fund, which on average brings about 10% every single year, in 20 years, you'd have $274,920. That's pretty good, almost $300,000, not bad for $100 a week or $400 a month. So now, if we have that $400 a month to invest, we're gonna put 200 of that into the dividend fund, which is VYM, and we're gonna put 200 of that into the growth fund, VUG. So if you invested that $200 per month into VYM for 20 years, you'd be at $137,460. And then if you put that other half into VUG at 12.5%, in 20 years, you'd have $183,265. The total there now is $45,000 more than if you just invested in VU itself. And remember, we didn't change anything. It was either 400 into VU each month or 400 by splitting up that 400 into 200 of into each ETF each month. But wait, there's more. Not only is the total amount $45,000 more, but at this point, you can start actually taking a dividend that's actually substantial enough to do something with, and that's only 20 years down the road rather than waiting all the way till retirement time. VYM would produce an annual dividend of $4,200 at this point, or, a free $350 per month. You could either keep reinvesting all that money into the fund and just let it super grow, and then five, 10, 20 years down the road from that, be able to totally live off of that passive income, or you just get a free $350 every single month for the rest of your life for doing literally nothing. Then you still have that growth fund cooking, and after the 40 years of just $200 in VUG, you could have $2,115,820. Now I know most of you are thinking, yeah, but that's 40 years away. That's way too long to wait. Cool. And if you want it faster, there is a way, and I'm going to share that secret now. All three of these ETFs are winners, and if you're investing even $10 a month, you're already way ahead of most of your friends and just most people overall. But if you have a real goal to be financially free and supercharge this investing journey and do exactly what I did, which was be able to invest a substantial amount of money each month so that my money could actually work super hard for me, then what you need to do is watch this video now and do exactly what it says today.